Hey guys, Backyard Scientist here. You know, I've always wondered what would happen if you poured molten aluminum off of a really tall building. Would it turn into a giant metal spike on its way down? Would it break apart like water and turn into molten aluminum rain droplets, or would it solidify into cool shapes on its way down? There's only one problem. I don't think anyone's gonna let me pour molten aluminum off of their really tall building. And I can't pour it off of my house. It's only one story tall. I need to get high. So somehow I swindled a heavy equipment rental agency into letting me get a 50 foot man lift. So I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I have no idea how to use this machine, but I've been watching YouTube videos on what not to do. But it doesn't matter, because the guy pretty much assured me that this machine basically won't let me kill myself on it. All right, quick walk through safety inspection. This is mildly concerning. This is probably nothing to be concerned about. You know, I'm not one to normally care about safety, so I'm not going to. First thing you do, put the arms down so it can level itself. So the guy said something about wearing a safety belt so you don't tip off, and I saw something online about wearing a safety noose. No, I don't think that was right. All right, let's see how high this thing can go. Oh no. All right, so I haven't planned this out very well. There's a lot of trees on my property and I don't think I can go up 50 feet. So I'm gonna have to find somewhere to do this with more land and less trees and I think I know just the spot. So we went over to my friend Steven's place and this solved the tree problem, but we still have another problem. So I'm gonna be honest. I think I forgot the key. No, no. So uh, crisis averted. Apparently Steven's dad had a key that would work because apparently all the keys are, uh, I guess, exactly the same or something. Well, it's true. Today I learned that most heavy equipment brands have their own universal key. Not only that, but you can buy an entire set of them on Amazon Prime. Oh, I am already too high. I, this is... I can almost touch you. You have not gone nearly far enough. You're one-tenth, one-fifth of the way there. This is it. This is how I die. Oh my God. <laughs> I hate this. I hate... I'm not even afraid of heights. I just hate this. I know it doesn't look like I'm that high, Steven, but you come up here and you tell me what you think about this because it is... It's scary. I don't know how you do this. My mom would be crying and she's egging Steven on to go higher. You're there, 50 feet. All the way. All the way. You can't even fit this all on the camera. It's way up there. That is this way. This is really high. <laughs> all right, time for experiment number one. We're gonna see if molten aluminum can cool before it hits the ground. And I think the best way to do that is to bring it up on the lift and let it cool so it just starts to solidify. And right when it's about to solidify, pour it off. That way it has the best chance of cooling before it hits the ground and maybe we can collect some frozen droplets of aluminum. We set up a fish tank below to capture the aluminum and filled it with rocks so the hot metal won't crack the glass. Now I've just gotta load up the aluminum and head up on the lift. All right, it's starting to solidify. I've gotta pour it now. All right, three, two, one. Oh no, Steven, we missed the fish tank. Oh my gosh, the grass is on fire. Well, even though we missed the fish tank, I could still tell that the molten aluminum was still molten by the way it splashed on the side of the fish tank. Unfortunately, we missed the pool by about three feet, so we have to move the pool and move the fish tank back about three feet. Hopefully it'll work this time. Okay, so for test number two, I wanna see if I can get aluminum to explode on contact with water. And you might not think of aluminum as a very reactive metal. Under the right circumstances, aluminum should react with water just like sodium or potassium metal does. <laughs> yes. Ow! It's really tricky to get it to explode though because normally aluminum is actually so reactive with the air it instantly forms a protective layer of aluminum oxide the second that it touches the oxygen. So if you pour that into water slowly, you're not gonna disturb that oxide layer and the chances of getting an explosion are pretty small. So anyway, in order to get the molten aluminum to react and explode with water, we need to remove the oxide layer from the surface. And I think the best way to do that is to pour it from really high up and hopefully when it hits the water, it disturbs it and just goes boom but uh, hopefully it doesn't boom too much because I'm gonna be 50 feet above it when that happens. Look at how orange hot that aluminum is. That's super hot. You know, I've heard the hotter it is, the aluminum has a better chance to explode. Oh my gosh, the drone's giving me a warning saying high wind warning. What about me? All right, I'm gonna do a little test, all right? 
All right, we're on target. Now for the moment of truth. Here we go. Three, two, one. Something interesting I noticed about molten aluminum is it doesn't fall like a normal raindrop shape like you think it might. It actually turns into these little diamonds as it falls through the air and then it turns sideways before it hits the water. And then looking back at the high speed footage, I didn't really see any explosions when the aluminum hit the water. I saw a lot of big splashes, but I wouldn't exactly say that they're explosions. I guess it's harder to get molten aluminum to explode with water than I thought it was going to be. I guess I'll revisit this in a future video, but for now I want to try something else. Instead of big globs of aluminum cooling before they hit the ground, that's probably not going to happen. There is too much mass, it's never going to solidify on the way down. So we're going to try something else. We're going to use this pasta strainer with a bunch of little holes and I'm going to pour aluminum into it. And I'm hoping that a bunch of little droplets of aluminum will pour out of this thing instead of one big chunk. And maybe these little tiny raindrops of molten aluminum will solidify before they hit the ground. All right, let's see if this is sturdy enough to support 10 pounds of aluminum. I'd say so. All right, aluminum's hot and ready to go, so let's get started. This part's always just mildly terrifying. Okay, time to go up. All right, I'm gonna do a little test, all right? Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Uh, I guess I'll try it, all right? <laughs> Did you see that? All over the place, it made it go all over. Looks like it was still molten by the time it hit the ground, I'm pretty sure. I don't see any raindrop shaped pieces of aluminum, so I don't think that it cooled before it hit the ground. Looking back at the high speed video, you can definitely tell that the aluminum was still molten by the time that it hit the ground. You can see the aluminum splashing on the edges of the fish tank. But hey, even if the aluminum was solid by the time that it hit the ground, you would still not want to be in this rainstorm. Instead of singing in the rain, you would be screaming in the rain. So Steven had this idea. Instead of trying to pour molten aluminum off the lift, we're just going to throw some solid aluminum off the lift. But first, let me tell you about a solid way to protect yourself online. So why do you need to protect yourself online? Well, here's an analogy. Let's say you're a fish tank. A fish tank on the internet full of valuable information. Now you see this guy up here? He wants to steal your information. Watch. Oh, that's right, he can't, because you have NordVPN. So, what is a VPN and why do you need one? Here's a scenario. Let's say you're a fish tank. A fish tank on the internet. Without a VPN, people can see right inside. Hackers, the government, your internet service provider, this guy again. But NordVPN obscures your location and traffic over the internet so nobody can see what's actually going on inside. NordVPN is so powerful it can bypass content filters in restrictive countries like China and Saudi Arabia. Imagine living in a country where the government can decide what you can and can't see. I'm proud to live in a free country where only multinational corporations can decide what you can and can't see based on arbitrary licensing deals. By the way, NordVPN can get around those annoying things too. Now I've had NordVPN for two years now since I did my first NordVPN sponsorship. I literally use it every day from the moment I log on on my computer. It's always connected, and I sincerely urge you guys to take your online safety seriously and protect yourself online. So get a huge discount on two years of NordVPN at nordvpn.com slash backyard, and when you use the code backyard, you'll get an extra month for free. Take control of your internet experience today with NordVPN. Again, that's a huge discount on a two-year plan of NordVPN, so go to nordvpn.com slash backyard and use the code BACKYARD for your extra month free. Now it's time to smash that fish tank. Oh! 
left! No! Okay, time for take two. Oh, oh yeah! That, that was awesome! That was so satisfying! Oh man, that turned out awesome! Look at it! All right, so pouring molten aluminum off of a really tall building and hoping that it freezes really isn't that crazy of an idea. It's actually how they used to make lead shot for shotgun shells, but those towers were over 200 feet tall, and some of them had fans blowing up from the bottom too to cool the lead shot as it fell down. Anyway, I'm not giving up on this idea just yet. There's gotta be somebody out there that has a tall building that'll let me pour aluminum off of it. But anyway, that's the end of this video for now. I had a good time. I hope you guys did too. See you next time. Bye.